You chose to sucker punch your grandmother. You chose to sell her wedding and engagement rings. And until you take responsibility for that, you're going to keep doing it. All right there, I want to talk about the disease model of addiction. I've spoken about it at length on my channel, but I'm just going to um, make a, a small little bite-sized um, critique of it. Uh, yeah, that's fair enough. Because I had the disease of addiction. I mean, I don't know whether it was uh, brought down genetically, uh, whether I touched something that was infected with the disease of addiction. Maybe I picked it up sexually, who knows? Who knows how it was transferred to me? But for most of my adult life, I had this disease of addiction. I'll tell you how it affected me. It was, it's some disease, really. I don't know quite how it functions, but you know, I'd wake up in the morning and, and straight away it would be on me, my disease. And it would make me get dressed. Well, actually, my disease had already been working because I'd have slept in my clothes. Why take them off? What's the point? You're only going to put them back on in the morning. Part of the disease of addiction makes you lazy like that. And it also makes your house cold because you've sold everything you own and, 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 and it, you can't afford to put the heating on or the lighting, uh, even if you've got any light bulbs left because uh, you might have sold them to someone for 20 pence to feed your disease. And then that disease would make me go out and try and find money. I mean, that's a weird thing for a disease to do. So I'd go out and I'd, I'd either have to go shoplifting, I'd have to go around some friends' houses. But to be honest with you, after you've had the disease for about a year, two years, you've, you've burnt all your bridges. The disease of addiction burns all your bridges. And you, 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 know, you rob all your friends. You go around there for a cup of tea and when they go out to make your cup of tea, you steal anything you can because you, your disease needs things to sell. And so then I'd go and sell whatever I'd stolen, uh, however I'd found money. A lot of the time I'd go and drag uh, shopping trolleys out of rivers because they'd still have the pound in them. And if I could sort of push one of them back to Sainsbury's, I could put the clipper in it and take out the pound that someone left in there. You only need 10 of them and you can go and get a bag because your, your, your disease needs that. Then my disease would make me climb over the wall at the train station, run across the tracks and, and bunk the train up to the next town, which is where most of, I suppose we could call them, disease vendors lived. And uh, then my disease would cause me, you know, I'm, I, I was just like a, a 24 year old man. What could I do against such power? It would cause me to go to the chemist and get a bag of needles, little disposable spoons, you can get these in chemists in England by the way, everything in that bag to inject heroin, except for the heroin and a lighter. Really everything else, needles, filters, alcoholic swabs, disposable spoons. I mean it's strange that a, a, a pharmacy would collude with such a, an evil disease. And then, and then I'd, I'd put, the, oh, you know, and I'd, fight, I'd be fighting my disease. No, no, and I'd put the heroin in the spoon and put some citric acid in. That comes in the bag as well. And, uh, you know, a bit of water. That comes in the bag, little ampules of water. Cook it up, pull it up. And then, because I've got no veins left, because my disease made me jab loads of blunt and used needles. I mean, I'd, in fairness, my disease did make me sharpen them occasionally on the side of a matchbox. But because I'd done them all in, I'd have to go in the holes in my femoral veins, which is either side of my genitalia, because there's a big old tube of a vein that goes down there. Make sure you don't hit your nerve, though, or you'll fly through the roof. And if you hit your artery, you'll... Yeah, it's... It, it's <laughs> but, you know, what a disease. And, and then I'd sort of... I'd, you know, I could find the, the site. They often put ultraviolet lights in toilets to stop junkies finding their veins. But with your femoral site, you know, you can feel it because it's such a deep hole. Because in the, in the 20 odd years of my using, I worked out a low average, I injected myself over 70,000 times. That's some disease, right? Uh, and then I'd, I'd push it in there, pull the blood in, push it in, bosh. And then I'd, I'd feel a, bit, a, li a little bit better, almost normal. 
I do all that to feel almost normal every day. Now I attended nearly 20 rehab centers. It might be more, I, I lost count. Part of the disease of addiction is you don't think about things much. And um, when you go there, the treatment, the way they treat the disease of addiction is God. That seems weird, doesn't it? Because with cancer or something, it'll probably be some sort of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, I don't know. You know, if, with, uh, if you've got like a, a liver problem, maybe a, a new liver, a transplant. But with the disease of addiction, God. Now, some, play, some of these treatment centres, they, they say it doesn't have to be God. It can just be a higher power of your choice. And I've heard people with the disease of addiction, maybe it's the disease that made them talk such nonsense, I've heard them say that their higher power is their cat. And in a room full of people who've all got this same disease, everyone's like, yeah, yeah. And then someone else has chipped in that their high, one bloke's higher power was this little glowing baby he saw when he shut his eyes. So that's a little bit strange. Listen, the point being, it isn't a disease. And we could get into, we could talk about the meaning, you know, we could get all, all semantic about this. Oh, but what actually does disease mean? We know what disease means. Let's not complicate the issue. An addiction isn't a disease. Addiction doesn't exist. On the superficial level that some drugs, if you take them um, for a certain amount of time and then stop taking them, you're going to go through a withdrawal as your body gets back to normal, as your brain chemistry, you know, starts coping without that drug you're putting in it. In as much as that happens, yes, we could call that addiction, I suppose. But the idea that you're an addict, you've got the disease of addiction. And I'm not, I'm not just calling this out because it's stupid, I'm calling it out because it's dangerous. I've sat in group therapy in, in rehab centres and listened to stories such as the one where one young lad told us all a story about where he sucker punched sucker punched it's the the most nasty of attacks just catch someone unawares <laughs> it was his grandmother though she was only about 80 so he probably didn't have to hit her that hard to knock her out cold so he could steal her wedding and engagement rings and go and sell them for enough heroin for that day i mean what a disease and after he told that story he said that he carries a lot of shame and a lot of guilt for those kinds of behaviours. And everyone in the room was like, mm, yeah, me too, me too. And the therapist, the therapist, don't worry though, she's got God on her side, because that's what they do in these places. Um, the therapist said, you shouldn't, you shouldn't carry shame and guilt, because that's the disease of addiction. That's what it does to you. And he was like, yeah... And I said, no, no, you're an horrible bastard. And until you take responsibility for your actions, that you chose to take heroin every single time you took it. Now, it might have been very uncomfortable if you didn't take it, but that was because you made other choices to take it repeatedly for weeks, months, years. But you chose to do that. You chose to sucker punch your grandmother. You chose to sell her wedding and engagement rings. And until you take responsibility for that, you're going to keep doing it. And so in these rehab and detox centres, where they tell people they've got this disease, they're letting them off the hook. And they, are, they will use that. I've used it. I've said to my mum, Mum, let me, please give me 20 quid, please, please. I'm going to stab someone. I'll, I'll mug someone if you don't give me 20 quid. Not because I had a disease. What disease makes you do that? No, because I was a horrible bastard. Selfish. It's all just behavioural. Addiction is a choice. We choose to do these things. We choose to take these drugs. Now, do we need help? Yeah, yeah. 
But the disease model doesn't help anyone. It hinders people. It gives them an excuse. It was only when I read Jeffrey Schaller's book, Addiction is a Choice, did I start to realise I might be able to change my life. Because as soon as... You know, Every, as soon as I was told I had a disease, oh, it's not me, it's not me, it's, oh, it's, it's my addict. You'll hear that a lot of the time. Oh, it wasn't me, it was my addict. Oh, what? <laughs> Are you crazy? But it was, it was only when I realised, no, this is your decisions, your doing, your choices, your mess, your responsibility. It's you. It's not a disease. Stop making these horrible decisions. Stop being selfish. Change. There's no such thing as addiction. And it certainly isn't a disease. Yeah. <laughs>